Hey guys, Taki here. Mini handhelds seem to be all the rage this year, and this latest device promises on paper to be a real contender. In this video, we're going to take a look at the all new Q36. The Q36 comes in a playful package, which shows that it does not take itself too seriously. In the box, we have a charging cable, a lanyard, and the device itself. The unit that I have here is one of the two color options available for this device. The Q36 comes with an all-winner V3S CPU with one Cortex-A7 CPU clocked at 1.2 GHz. It has a 2D GPU, 64 MB of DDR2 RAM, 32 GB of SD card storage, a 1000 mAh battery, and a 5.4 inch IPS display with a resolution of 240 by 240. All of this runs on a Linux OS. Powkitty claims that this device can run more than 10 systems, including a PSP Neo Geo Pocket. We will test those claims later in this video. This new device shares some things in common with the recent Miu Mini that I reviewed a week ago. They both have similar specs, and they are both in the $50 to $60 price range. In the interest of full disclosure, Palkitty sent this unit over to me for the purposes of this review. All of the opinions that you're about to hear are my own, and no one from the company has seen or approved this video before it was uploaded to YouTube. So, let's take a look at what we have on the Q36. On the left side, we have a D-pad with a mono speaker. On the right side, we have a power and menu button, a set of ABXY buttons, an LED indicator light, and start and select. In the center, we have a 1.54 inch IPS display with OCA glass on the front. This seems to be a screen that would be used in a smartwatch and it is reasonably bright with the lights on in my studio. The entire form factor of this device seems to be heavily inspired by the Game Gear and I can assume that this was developed after the announcement of the Game Gear Micro. On the top, we have a single set of shoulder buttons, a Type-C charging port with USB storage functionality, and an SD card slot to hold our software and games. The back shell is pretty bare with a flat plastic panel and curved edges. This is held in place with four screws and we will be doing a teardown of this at the end of this review. There is unfortunately no headphone jack on the bottom of this device, which is a missed opportunity in my opinion. We do have a spot for a lanyard, which speaks more to the purpose of this device more than anything else. In terms of the finish and feel of the plastic, this is about what I would expect for a product at this price point. The materials used are appropriate for the overall image of the device. Now I want to talk about the controls. The D-pad uses conductive rubber for input, and this is one of the smallest applications that I've seen for something like this. It can pivot reasonably well, but it's not that good for fighting games. It does work well for just about everything else. The ABXY buttons are on the small side, but they also use conductive rubber and work well. This is obviously going to depend on how big your hands are. When you're holding the device in your hands, it will probably look something similar to this. I can easily press the shoulder buttons if I need to, and I can access all of the input options without needing to move my fingers that much. I think this landscape orientation can work well in a product of this size. The speaker that we have in the Q36 is obviously very small, but it is able to pump out enough audio to hear at its loudest setting. We do not have a headphone jack to fall back on, so this speaker could make or break the entire device for me. I'm going to show you what this sounds like at medium volume. And then we're going to take a look at two clips at max volume. My mic is about as far away as your head would be. Now let's go over the software. The first thing that you'll notice is that the Q36 has the fastest boot time of any product in this market. It is running on the FunKey S operating system and is optimized for pick up and play functionality. Right now we're looking at the default theme of the device which gives you big icons for each system and a vertical scrolling list of your ROMs with artwork in the background. There are several other themes that come with the unit that you can swap between inside the main menu. Here's the MU station theme. I actually don't like the look of this because it's too small, but the sub-menu is decent. Here's another theme that makes this look more like a watch. The fun key theme is probably my least favorite of the options here due to how the ROMs are displayed. The remaining themes have their own pros and cons, but I think the default TFT theme is the best of the bunch. Let's punch into a system to see what it's like to load a game. We have two options here, resume game and new game. I'm gonna start a new game here. You can see how fast the game boots up. 
If we press the power button, we can change the volume, exit the game, change the aspect ratio, load save states and save states, as well as change the brightness. For systems, we have Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advanced, NES, SNES, Game Gear, Master System, Genesis, PC Engine, Lynx, Neo Geo Pocket, Wonderswan, and PS1. There's one more thing that we can do with this system which adds some functionality. If we press the menu button, we can change the launcher to one that should look familiar to most of you watching this video. Now we have a mini RG350. In here we can add new emulators to the system like FBA and MAME. We also have the ability to use some RetroArch cores. Let me launch a game that I've been enjoying on the system to show you the options. If we press the power button now, we have a scale back view of the options that you would see in RetroArch. In the case of GB games, I can change the color of the games as well as a few other options. I think this game is a good example of something that you could enjoy on this small device. It is a game that I can play in small bursts without any issues. I'm not going to be playing games that I always need to be reading small text. I'm going to primarily play stuff that I can enjoy while waiting in line or sitting on the train. There are also other game ports that are available for this system that you can install on your own, but the list is very small at this point. I don't know if a product like this could generate more interest from developers because there is a lot of untapped potential here. One thing that I do like about this device is how easy it is to transfer files to the unit without having to remove the SD card. If I press the menu button, one of the new options that I get is to mount the USB. The files are then visible on my PC and the transfer rates between the device and my computer are not bad. Now I can browse the included folders to see the ROMs on the device and the artwork that go with them. I'm going to use this opportunity to add some of my own games for the gameplay section of this video. Before we look at gaming performance, I want to talk about the scaling options. We have a few things available to us to make the most out of our 1x1 panel. We can stretch images, crop them, use native scaling, or apply a custom zoom to the game. For me personally, scaling and stretching are the only options that are usable. In most cases, I will just use stretching, even though it doesn't look the best, just so I can get more use out of my screen. For some systems, scaling can also look decent, but it can also make an already small image even smaller. Now it's time to finally see what this small thing can do. For most of the games in this section, I've tried to select games that I think would work well in this small form factor. In many cases, these are the games that I have personally been playing and enjoying on my own device. If you go into this product with the mindset that it should be pick up and play in small doses, then I think you will find that it's up to the task. As you can see, we have decent performance in GB and GBC games. I was interested to see if our single core CPU would be able to handle GBA games, and I was pleasantly surprised that this runs games very well. As you would expect, NES does not give us any issues. There is an important thing that I want to mention as it pertains to SNES emulation. The processor and or the screen can only output 50 FPS. For some reason, Super Nintendo is the only system on this handheld that I'm able to notice some slight decrease in performance over what I would expect. I'd try to see if PAL games would run any better, but the difference is so minor that it's too difficult to tell if there is any improvement. It might not even be obvious on the footage that's playing, but I wanted to mention it here.
I skipped over Wonderswan, but so far the device runs all of the systems that were advertised. The first game that I want to look at for the PS1 is Crash Warped. I'm playing this game because I want to show off extensive use of the shoulder buttons for this timed run. Similarly, we have Crash Team Racing, which also relies on the shoulder buttons. Performance for these two games is very good. On the top end of the PS1, the system can struggle to maintain full FPS in games like Tekken 3. Just like Tekken, Bloody Roar 2 is a bit sluggish. Let's round out this review with my final thoughts on the Q36. This is a small, yet usable device that I think could make a decent gift for someone that is interested in retro games. At first, it's a novelty that you could put on your keychain, but it actually has the ability to game. Because it can function so well in this way, I wish the device came with several screen protectors in the box because I'm worried that I will destroy the screen with scratches if I have it on my keychain. It is light enough to be an everyday carry without being noticed, and it can provide you with a brief break from time to time. Not having a headphone jack is a disappointment, as is the lack of an all-black color option. At the current asking price, this has stiff competition from the MiU Mini, which also provides some of the same benefits that the Q36 does, yet with a larger screen. Anyway, I'm interested to know your thoughts on the Q36. Leave them down below, and consider subscribing to the channel if you are not already. I'll catch you next time with another review. Happy gaming, everyone. Talk you out. Did you think there would be a blooper here? Because I don't make mistakes. It has a 2D GPU, 64 gigabyte. What? Happy holidays, everyone.